lot of tribes here. Kiowa, Comanche, Osage, Navajo, Apache, Cherokee, Arapaho, Pawnee, Caddo. A hundred years ago, half these tribes were displaced and put on reservations next to each other. They learned to live in peace and share their cultures. What does it mean? It's just a fancy dance, showing off some athletic ability. Welcome to my lodge. It is my honor, Brightwater. If I had known, I would have come sooner. These are my good friends, Billy Gray Wolf and Alex K. Hill. Anyone who lives in Washoe's heart lives also in my heart. Please, make yourselves comfortable. The news of your journey makes me sad. It is a good journey. I am merely completing one circle to join an even greater one. It is a time to rejoice. You will be missed. And that will be my, my final honor. Washo, you must first heal yourself on the inside before you can train for the challenges outside. Will I ever see again, White Eagle? Only the Great Spirit can answer that, Washo. For now, you must learn to compensate for your blindness by using all your other senses. Your sense of touch, of smell, of hearing. You must learn to focus your senses, opening them and closing them at will. Next, you must learn to trust your senses, no matter where you might be. Reach with your mind, Washo, not your hands. White Eagle. I am here, Washo. I can't do this. You must learn to use your mind's eye, directing all your senses together so that the result is no different than when you could see.
Watcho. Now it is up to you. Thank you, White Eagle. White Eagle? What are you doing, Uncle Ray? Extending the wall. What does it look like? You've been extending for 10 years. This place is already too big. Never know. You might get married someday. Don't start that again. Wouldn't hurt to have a few grandchildren running around this place. Might lighten things up a bit. Uncle Ray, what am I going to do with you? I asked the same question of our tribal chief when you were given me to raise after your father died. What'd he say? Deal with it. <laughs> well, show. You forgot to say good morning to the sun. What sun, Uncle Ray? It's freezing out here. Do it anyway. Morning. My dad grew up on a reservation not too far from here. He was full-blooded Cherokee. He used to ride bulls in the local rodeo to earn extra money. In fact, that's where he met my mom. He was climbing in a chute one day to ride this old bull, and he looked up into the stands and saw this pretty white girl smiling at him. They met and fell in love and got married soon after. I remember when I was about 12 years old, a carnival came to this town where we were living in at the time. I'd never been to a carnival before, and I wanted to go in the worst way. It was the first time I'd ever seen a Ferris wheel or eaten cotton candy. I must have rode that Ferris wheel at least six times. It was a terrific evening, watching my mom and dad laugh. There wasn't much to laugh about in those days. We were walking back to the car. I remember we had a old Model T Ford. And the cars were all parked out in this dirt field. My dad had one arm around my mom and was holding my hand with the other. As we approached the car, these three uh, guys walked up to us. They were big guys, filthy clothes, and smelled of alcohol. They started saying these crude things to my mom like, how could she be with a dirty, rotten Indian and bring a half-breed into this world? My dad was a, was a very proud man, and he confronted these guys. And a fight started. They must have figured three-on-one would be no contest, but they didn't know my dad. My dad was whooping up on them pretty good. Then I saw a knife appear in one of the guy's hand. And I saw him stab my dad right in the back. And he stabbed, and he stabbed. Like my dad's back was a sack of grain that he was trying to open. My mom screamed and ran in there to try to stop him. He spun around on my mom and I saw this shocked look on her face and and I saw blood all over the front of her dress. She looked down at her stomach and slowly fell to the ground next to my dad. Did they hurt you too? They hurt me real bad. Let me see. Where was I the last time we were talking about the reservation? Mm -hmm. Uncle Ray was teaching you how to be an Indian. About making bows and arrows and riding and learning about animals and things. Oh, that's right. I learned how to be a Cherokee on the outside. And the next thing was about spirits and ghosts and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Now I had to learn how to be a Cherokee on the inside. The physical part of being a Cherokee was easy. The rest would be much harder. It's 
time for a change in your training, nephew. The Indian in you is ready to start on the path to manhood. Teach me then. I can only teach you so much. I'll take you to White Eagle. He's a tribal medicine man. White Eagle was a legend among the Cherokee. He lived out in the wilderness with the spirits of the land and sky. With their help, sought the true path. For a young man, the idea of meeting White Eagle was really scary. True path? What is it? Fighting and Indian stuff like that? No, there's more to Indian stuff than fighting, Lucas. It's learning how to train your spirit the same way you train your body. How does that help you? Well, for one thing, it helps you control fear. I know, Washu, that Ottawa Yoli will soon cross the river. I have spoken to the Great Spirit, and he told me that he brought you into Ottawa Yoli's life to prepare him for that journey. Lucas, you ready? This is for you, Arwajoli. For being a brave warrior. Jeez. Yes, jeez. And always remember, you are part of a great circle. Earth. Sky, fire, water, life and death. But there is nothing to fear. Many human beings walk this path alone. But with the spirits of many brothers and sisters all around. I'll remember. Bye. Bye, White Eagle. Boy has grown up to be a warrior. Yes. Thanks to you, White Eagle. Farewell, Washo. If I see you again, good. If I don't, I'll meet you at the campfire in the sky. Farewell, White Eagle. Thank you again, Washoe. 
for showing me the way. You knew the way, Billy. I just helped a little bit. Goodbye, my brother. I'll say all. My brother. Any wrong you do, he's gonna see. When you're in Texas, look behind you. Cause that's where the Rangers gonna be. Yeah.